our money is not managed. So after this talk, you will be definitely know about maze and what activities we are doing. This is the era of knowledge. Everybody talking about knowledge-based economy. And in the morning session, we have learned that where Pakistani economy stands. We have several examples, and several examples are also given in the morning. If I take the example of just one country, Singapore, it's a very small country. The total area is 719 square kilometers. Population is very small, it's just 5.5 million. But the export of that country before Obama, it was over 500 million US dollars. And their import was around 450 million US dollars. And if you compare that with a huge country with full of natural resources, with full of youth, then you go, the total export of Pakistan is about 25 million US dollars. And our import are about 25 million US dollars. So comparing with a very small country, you can feel the difference. And this is the difference of knowledge and knowledge-based economy. My journey is about how we can actually make Pakistan a scientific and innovative country and our journey for making Pakistan a scientific and innovative country. I was actually from a very small village. My primary education is from the same village. There was a school with a single room and a mud boundary, so we were studying there. And during the rain or in storm, we were very happy because only one class could fit in in that small room, and for the rest of the classes they could have a leave. So we were happy that we had a single room and only one class and teacher can accommodate here. After this, I moved to nearby uh, city school, so I learned the English like ABC for the first time in the sixth grade, and I was in, in, in like from six to ten class, I, I studied there. After that, for my FSC, I went to a nearby city. So that was like about, I had to travel each day for six hours, like three hours going there and three hours going back to my village. After that, I went to university that was opening up a new life. So in university, I was very much passionate to promote science and technology in the country, but there was no way of doing that. How we can do that? One day, one of my friends, he came to me and he said, we have a forum. It's called Sci Forum Pakistan. So this is a forum for life scientists. Why not you should join it because you are very much passionate and doing lots of activities about science promotion in the university. So I joined that forum back in 2004 and in 2006, I became the president of that Sci Forum Pakistan. So that was actually a start that how I can contribute in the society, how I can contribute for the promotion of science and technology in Pakistan. The title I received in after my BS honors, so there was a fair right for me, and the title they gave to me was Man Chota Sa Bacham, So that was a motivation for me that I do a big thing. After that, I started my entry-level PhD program guys. in the same university. Yeah. But in 2008, I got the opportunity for moving from my university to United States because they wanted to uh, wanted me to learn some advanced skills in the area of uh, making the proteins and stem cell biology. Mm -hmm. So I went to US, yeah. and when I went to US, things were totally changed here. As you know, I know about the scientific infrastructure in our country, the scientific, you know, ecosystem in our country, that was totally different. For example, if we have to get some chemicals, sometimes it takes a month, sometimes even six months to get the chemical to do the experimental work in Pakistan. If we have to get the primates, for example, that's a very small thing to get. And we have to wait like for a month, and after that we used to get the primates and get new experiments. And in the US, the things were totally changed. Everything we need to work was already there in our laboratories. If we had to order something, if we are in the morning, we get it in the evening. If we are in the evening, we get it the next morning. So that was totally changed scenario. So I was thinking, like, US is very advanced. Why not make Pakistan an advanced country? Why not we should have a similar culture in Pakistan? So I used to make notes there. I still have that copy to me that in which I used to make notes that how we can make Pakistan a scientifically sound country. So 
a man who back to Pakistan, we started a setup that was National Academy of Young Scientists. So I discussed with my colleagues, with the senior scientists, so we launched National Academy of Young Scientists in 2009. And we are really proud that National Academy of Young Scientists is the first National Young Academy in Asia, and we are 15th in the world. So that was the Pakistan scientific and innovative country. So we started with seven projects. These are the list of the projects that we were doing that how we can engage the young scientists. And our criteria was also very different. You know, for each organization, there is a 20, 60, 20 rule. So 20% people they are very active. 60% people they are like if you give them some talk to do it. And the 20% people they are really lazy, they don't do anything, you know, they spread the negative things. So we try to pick up the top 20 person, so we can do very active things. And for the next five years, like it is also a global young academy, we are the partner of global young academy. And from 2010 to 2015, we got the most active national young academy, only because we have a better team and we were running separate programs to promote science and technology. So we started the programs like English Letter, Bulletin, to showcase the young scientists we have a nature of. We started the IDS lab, and these are the list of programs we were running. And I'll give you some of the glimpses that our, we were doing these things. So one of the things was meet the scientists. We have, we used to get a senior scientist uh, to the university to talk his uh, story of life, that how he has done publications, how has he impacted the science, so we can motivate the young scientists to do similar kind of work. So this was one of our projects. So another thing we have focused on the skill development of our young researchers. So we have a lot of focus that how we can have more skills up in our young scientists. One of the things that I have learned, like I traveled to over 30 countries uh, as a representative from Pakistan. I'm lucky to be a member of World Economic Forum, World Science Forum as a scientist. So in all those forums, what we used to do, they actually gather the people from different disciplines like doctors, scientists, physicists, economists. They were sitting together and they had the innovative idea. And this is the culture that we lack in Pakistan. So what we started that we should engage our youngsters, we should bring them together, and they should discuss our problems so we can bring over solutions. So this is one of the things that we started and that really helped. Another program we started uh, with Pakistan Science Foundation called Young Social Skill Development. And we started a series of workshops in our universities. So the workshops were like on article writing, project writing, CV writing, how you can apply for foreign scholarships, kind of these projects. So we started a series of these workshops, and each workshop, more than 500 youngsters, the young scientists, they attended these workshops, and it was a huge success for them. Another important thing was how we can engage all the science societies. You know, there must be a science society in Bangalore University, there was a science society in NAS, so in each university there are science societies. What we used to do, we bring on those societies so we can learn from best practices that they are doing and also they can work collaboratively to promote science and technology. Another flagship program that we started was Science for You. In Science for You, we used to go in schools and colleges and we do the demonstration for our youngsters so we can motivate them that how they can pursue their scientific career. So this is also one of the flagship programs. We are in the free medical camps. We, as for the, our medical personnel, we started a series of workshops on chronic pain management in different uh, hospitals. Another series of we started was uh, in collaboration with the National Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology. We run this program in several universities, and that was also a big success for us. In addition, we also work on like emerging technologies, you know, emerging technology like Corona is a problem, how we can develop the vaccine on one hand, physical technology, how we can treat cancer, uh, how we can work on like quantum physics and so on. So we engage our sisters on emerging technologies. Another success was in Pakistan, we were lucky enough to run the biggest scientific experiment. We could gather more than thousand young minds. And all of those thousand people, they run the scientific experiments at the same time, and we have a record of that as biggest scientific experiments in Pakistan, and we will try to make a biggest scientific experiment in the world as well. 
We do arrange a different program like data train awareness things and other activities. We have conducted one of the area that was lacking in Pakistan after traveling to so many countries for biosecurity and biosecurity. So we, we had a lot of international collaborations and we conducted over 100 workshops on biosecurity and biosecurity. We have community education awareness program, like we celebrate all the international days, like AIDS Day, Hepatitis Day, Hypertension Day, or Day, and so on. So we celebrate all these days by arranging different activities in our schools, colleges, and universities. And then the success of National Guide to Young Scientists, we have different working groups, and in each working group, we have like minded people. They come together and they work on those specific areas, like we have women in science, and we have and the women leaders from different universities who are working together to promote science in Pakistan. We are working on one health approach, a sustainable development goal. We have a very active working group on cancer treatment and also on biosafety. In addition, we have an expert team of different experts from the economy, from agriculture, from physics. Actually, all the, the main purpose of any academy is to assess the problem the country is facing and take those things to the policy makers. And we have leading team of experts who are working us to know what the problem we are facing and how we can bring solutions to these problems. So we have expert team. Our initial focus from 2010 to 2020 was scientific networking. And this is also advice for all of you that 70% of your future success in your job or in your business is based on your scientific it's based on your network, so it's very important to have a good network. Your network is your network, so try to build good networks. And this is we have built so far, and we are connecting to more than fifty thousand young researchers of Pakistan, those who are working in Pakistan and also in so many other countries. Our focus for 2020 to 2030 is innovation and entrepreneurship, and this is the area we are mainly focusing now. We have conducted a series of workshops for the faculty, for the students, and we are running the uh, courses now in different universities that how we can promote innovation and entrepreneurship. So this is with this, like this is our humble approach of uh, promoting science in Pakistan. I know when I became the member of the Economic Forum, the Global Innovation Index ranking of Pakistan was around 110 position. Now we are standing at 99. I, I used to go to different forums and used to say that Pakistan is after 100 countries in innovation, but now we are in 100 countries in innovation. Another important parameter for Pakistan is the publications used to make. When we started the National Academy of Young Scientists, we were at 45th position in number of publications. Now we are at 47 positions. So this is a small contribution from our side to promote science and technology in Pakistan. One of the challenges that we are spending just 0.2% of our budget on research and development. We have to put large hold on research and development and on education. And this is how we can take, make Pakistan to the next levels. And by these programs and many other programs, definitely we can make Pakistan a scientific country with a scientific culture and an innovative country with an innovation ecosystem. Pakistan? Yeah. Yeah.